Single board computers like the Raspberry Pi have made it super easy to place a computer wherever you need one. Do you need something to run Octoprint for your new 3D printer? Well, you can just write the latest version of OctoPi to an SD card, stick it in a Pi, and you're ready to go. Want to play some of your favorite retro games? Well, that's no problem either. Write the latest version of RetroPi to an SD card, load it into your Pi, and you're up and running. But one of the limitations of this setup comes from what it uses for storage. Micro SD cards are cheap and come in a variety of sizes, but weren't really designed with the abuse of an operating system in mind. Today, we're going to take a look at something that helps eliminate some of that abuse. Log2RAM is a utility that can be installed on most Linux-based operating systems. As the name suggests, it allows your operating system to log to RAM on your device instead of directly to the SD card by creating a virtual RAM disk. Rather than having to read and write from the card every time a new line is added to a log, the changes are made in memory and only pushed to the SD card on a schedule or when a controlled shutdown is done on the Pi. Why would you want to do this? Well, your SD card is divided up into sectors. Each sector can store a specific amount of information, say 512 bytes. When you write one byte or 512 bytes, it uses one of these sectors. Sometimes this means it has to read what's in a sector, combine it with what you're trying to write, erase that sector, and then rewrite the data. When you're logging multiple bytes of data per second during regular operation on a device, that can mean a lot of reading and writing, which can prematurely wear out your SD card. The advantages of using log to RAM is that it is faster and it's far less abusive to your disk. But this does come with some disadvantages as well. You see, you're going to be creating a virtual disk in your RAM, which means you're going to lose some, about 40 megabytes by default, and your logs will not be saved in the event that there's a power outage. Installing log to RAM is simple, and you'll find a list of all the commands that I've run in the description below, so you can follow along without any problem. So the first thing we need to do is add a new source to our system. So we'll go ahead and do that. You'll have to, of course, give your sudo password so that you can do that. Next, we need to add the key for the source so that it's able to authenticate that we're getting it from the right place. With our source added and our key added, the next thing we need to do is run an update so that we can get a list of all the new packages that are available there. So we'll do a sudo apt update. And with the list of new packages available done, all we have to do is do a sudo apt install log to RAM. And that's it, log to RAM is installed. Now, if you want to make some changes to the default configuration, we can do a sudo nano to the slash etc slash log to RAM dot conf, and we can change the settings that it comes with by default. So here we can change the default size of the virtual drive, whether or not it uses rsync or a regular copy command to do the copy from RAM to storage, whether or not mail is enabled. Uh, so if you have uh, email enabled so that you can get notifications when there's problems, uh, if logging causes an issue due to the fact that you've run out of space, you can enable or disable mail related to that. Uh, there's also the path where your regular logging would be stored. This is basically uh, taking over that spot. And um, there's also some com compatibility options in here. So uh, if you're happy with the regular configuration, we can drop out of there. And then the only other thing you need to know is that uh, when you're logging, it's written to storage, either when you do a controlled shutdown or by default, it's written once a day using a cron job. So you can move the file from the slash etc slash cron dot daily, where you'll find the log to RAM file. So you can move that into one of the other directories for the the uh, cron system, if you want it to run a different uh, on a different schedule. So there's dot daily, dot weekly, dot monthly, and dot hourly. So pick the one that works for you, or remove it completely if you don't care about your logs getting written back to the system. And with the configuration changes done that you want and it's set up the way you like it, you can just issue a sudo reboot. And when your Pi comes back up, you should be up and running with log to RAM. After rebooting your device, you can make sure that log to RAM is working as intended by issuing a df-h pipe grep log to RAM. And you should see an entry for log to RAM there. You can also check the mount points on your system by issuing the mount command and then looking for log to RAM in the listing there as well. And that's it. Your SD card will now experience less abuse and hopefully live a longer life. If you found this tutorial helpful, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel for future videos. If you have a topic you'd like me to cover in a future video, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, stay creative.